I've got this uh, uh, set up now, x in Pn. So I'm going to take this to be a, an algebraic a projective algebraic variety. So by definition, that means that it's uh, the locus of uh, uh, Right, and then we have this, uh, so then I have i of x in k, x not up to xn, um, an ideal. <coughs> so uh, uh, the, uh, there's, there's an obvious thing that we want to do with this, which is exactly as in the affine case, we want to define kx is uh, polynomial ring, k of, so let me write k of pn for this, divided by ix. Right, uh, and so uh, let, let me, uh, if just in case of ambiguity, let me call this k homogeneous. So this is called the homogeneous coordinate ring. <clears throat> right, and so, uh, you know, the, in the affine case, as I explained at the beginning of the last lecture, uh, knowing x and knowing its affine coordinate ring uh, is more or less the same thing. So in the affine case, in the affine case, uh, x k affine of x is more or less one. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to say one to one. So this is not not meaningful statement, but uh, so knowing x is the same thing as knowing it's. Uh, homogeneous coordinate ring. So uh, what about the projective case? So as I said, everything uh, uh, in the projective case, uh, yeah, there's no, no such simple correspondence. So the good thing uh, uh, the, the good features uh, so uh, if I, I can do if I if I take the 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 Zariski topology on PN or on X in PN so this is more or less exactly the same, the same story as the affine case. Right, so I, so you look at the set of all affine subsets, uh, you set, sorry, you take, you look at the same, the, the set of all projective algebraic sub-varieties of Pn, and uh, these form the closed sets of a topology. So, uh, you know, just, uh, it's just, just ex repeating exactly what we said before. So the empty set is there because I can take V of the single, the, the identity. The whole space is there because I can take V of the zero ideal. And then, uh, you know, if I can take the intersection of any number of these things, I still get an algebraic variety, or I can take the union of two of them, I still get an algebraic variety. But that's exactly the same as in the, uh, as in the affine case. Right? Uh, what's, not, uh, what's not so good is that, but uh, we can't use uh, k of x, k homogeneous of x directly 
to get uh, regular functions on x. Okay, so e e e even even for x is p n, right? Then I've got polynomial ring k of x naught up to x n. If I go to degree one, if I go to degree zero, I get one. I get uh, so k in there, the constants. So so these are just the constant functions. on x. Right, in degree 1, I get uh, x naught up to xn. So these are linear forms. But they're not functions. Right, the place, the place where these are functions, so here's my, here's my x in pn. So as I said, there's this... Uh, affine cone, x in affine n plus 1. Right. And then uh, the f in k of x, homogeneous of x, are functions on c of x. So, so uh, I'm not sure if I said this. C of x, the cone over x, and this is just the same thing. This is uh, v affine of uh, i of x. Yes. So, um, uh, you know, that's the problem. The problem. So, the problem I'm I'm alluding to is the fact that these, these guys, these polynomials here, they're functions here. They're not functions here. Here I've got an equivalence relation, and the functions here just don't, don't respect the equivalence relation. So, you know, in particular, for even, even for linear forms, I take linear forms, I can of course apply them to a point up there, but uh, the value does not make sense as a function of the equivalence class, because if I chose a different... Uh, a different, uh, if I multiply, uh, if I multiply the point in here by non-zero lambda in the field, then of course I multiply the linear form also by lambda in the field. And so, um, um, uh, you know, there's no way, there's no way of getting, there's no direct way of getting global functions on uh, on x. In fact, uh, so uh, as uh, so, so what we have to do is. So instead, instead we uh, define rational functions. Right. So uh, exactly as in the affine case. So assume assume x is irreducible as in the affine case. Right, then I of x, this homogeneous ideal, is prime. So, uh, you know, you can read again the proof I gave in the, in the affine case. The proof's just the same. If the x is, if the, uh, if I of x is, uh, not prime, then I can find f and g not in there, so that the product is in there, and that means that the pro that f and g vanish on x. The uh, the product f g vanishes on x, but not f and g. So the sublocus. Anyway, just the same proof as before. Okay, and so uh, and so this ring, so k homogeneous of x. Is um, is an integral domain. Okay, so on the one hand, if I've got an integral domain, we know how to make a field. So uh, I can write k homogeneous 
of x is contained in uh, its field of fractions, right, which I'm not going to give a special name to just at the moment. Okay, and, uh, and, and, and also that gives us a way of getting rid of this uh, dependence. So, uh, if I take, if I take uh, f d divided by, so, so let me take, let me take f equals g d divided by h d. So these guys are here are homogeneous in k of k homogeneous of x of the same degree. And I'm going to assume that h of d is not 0 on x. Right? Then, then this is a rational function. This, so this is a partially defined function on x. Right. So uh, we've introduced, uh, you know, possibly some ambiguity, some locus here. So where h d is zero, we don't know that that function is defined. Usually it won't be. Right. So if h uh, d at, at a point p is not zero, then uh, g d of p divided by h d of p is now well defined, is well defined. Right, because I, I write p is a naught up to a n. And so now I'm going to take g d and evaluate him at uh, a naught up to a n, divided by h d a naught up to a n. Right, and now, uh, you know, this guy here is of course not unique. There's a choice here. I could do lambda a naught up to a n. I can, uh, uh, you know, this is just a choice in this equivalence class. And, uh, but if I, if I apply, if I give it there, I get lambda to the power of d divided by lambda to the power of d, and lambda's not zero, so they cancel. So this is now, so this, this homogeneous trick, homogeneous of the same de degree, so the homogeneous of the same degree, Uh, here's the uh, makes so this treats the problem of non-uniqueness so makes this well defined okay so uh, so you know my my problem my problem here is I want somehow or other to define an algebraic variety. I want to be able to define it up to, I want to define what morphisms are, what isomorphisms are, what the x is up to isomorphism, not necessarily embedded in the projective space. Uh, but uh, the, the thing I get directly, this homogeneous coordinate ring, is, um, uh, is not what I want. So the, the homogeneous coordinate ring itself does not consist of functions on x. And in order to get functions on x, I have to, uh, I have to d go some roundabout way. So here, the thing, I'm, the thing I'm doing roundabout is I allow denominators, and that introduces the fact that these are not actually functions. These are only functions, partially defined functions. <coughs> right? Um, and, uh, you know, what, uh, what is this construction? So, so, you know, this is sort of, why am I doing exactly this? So one way of thinking about this is this, that here I've got x in uh, projective n space, and uh, above here I've got this uh, affine cone over it, affine cone over x, so that's the same as before. <coughs> and so, uh, you know, there's a, 
the cone sort of looks like this, and there's the action of. So I'm uh, I'm drawing here the uh, k star orbits. There's an there's an action of this multiplicative group of the field on this cone, and x is uh, after taking away taking out the origin for safety. Uh, uh, it's the it's the quotient, right? So if I take frac of k homogeneous of x, right? This is the field of fractions of cx. Right. So the thing I get directly from this, uh, uh, so, so this k homogeneous of x directly gives me functions on this affine cone C of x. Right. So uh, you know, I've got this equivalence relation. If I take actual points of C of x, so if I haven't divided out by the equivalence relation, then. Uh, um, uh, my functions are well-defined. These polynomials themselves, homogeneous polynomials themselves, are well-defined functions. Right? And so now, uh, you know, I've got, I've got this group, k, k multiplicative. It's an algebraic group, multiplicative group. This acts on uh, everything. It acts on Cx, group action. So it acts on it acts on this k homogeneous of, of x, and it also acts on its field of fractions. Right? And what we're doing by doing this trick here, this homogeneous guys of the same degree, is taking the invariance. So k of x is the invariance of this action. Right? So, uh, you know, in Galois theory, I've got a big field. I've got a, a group acting on the field. And so I, take, I can take the field of invariance of the action. So there's a, there's a, there's a field here. So this consists of all g over all h, just with the condition that the h is not zero, and but no, no requirement that these are homogeneous. And now I've got the uh, I've got the group action here, which consists of going g lambda, g you know lambda times divided by h times lambda times, right? And what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm I'm choosing. I'm choosing the elements of this field that are invariant under the action. Right? So this is a subfield. This is a subfield of um, the of invariant. The subfield of uh, frac of k hom of x. Right, and this is uh, this point of view is just is is a little bit useful because it uh, it tells you the proper definition of this uh, of this k of x. So let me let me let me go back to say what k of x is. So this is the definition. I mean, I, I basically I've given the definition over there already. Definition: I'm taking uh, uh, so a rational function uh, k of x is the set of g d over h d such that uh, g h in k of x k homogeneous of x are both homogeneous of the same degree d 
right? And so, uh, you know, this expression here, g over h, when we write a fraction, we always have in mind that this fraction is an equivalence class. So I have to tell you what the equivalence relation is, divided out by the equivalence relation g over h equals, so twiddles, uh, e equals g primed over h primed, if and only if uh, g h primed minus g primed h is in the ideal of x. So uh, this is zero on x. Okay, so, so this is just the equivalence relation that defines uh, this, this field. And so uh, k of x is contained in this uh, field of fractions, that function field of c of x as the, in, as the k star invariant. Okay, so I mean, you know, this is sort of uh, just giving definitions and so on. It's not so uh, not so exciting. Uh, let's do uh, let's do um, a little uh, you know a little lemma saying well, basically we haven't done very much that's new in doing this. So lemma. Uh, suppose that x. Uh, is not not contained in x naught equals zero. Right. So here's my here's here's my whole projective space. Here's a, some variety, and I'm assuming the variety is not entirely contained in the hyperplane. So this is p n p n minus one, given by x naught equals zero. Okay. Then I can do x naught. I can write x naught x intersect a n, so not the uh, this is uh, a n with coordinates um, x1 over x0, x2 over x0, xn over x0. Right, so this is the standard, uh, so um, you know, if I take the place where x x naught, so I'm, I'm uh, this is this is just x naught not equal to zero in uh, in p n. <coughs> right, and this is so x naught in uh, x naught in a n. So let me write naught there. It's the zeroth affine piece. The piece x not not equal to zero. Uh, this is uh, an affine variety. Right? And you can see, in fact, that I of x naught is uh, so it's I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I write something sensible here, but uh, this is essentially uh, F evaluated at x1 over x0, uh, xn over x0. So the, uh, for f in, f in k homogeneous of x. Right. So I was complaining earlier that this k homogeneous of x doesn't do the right thing for us. It doesn't give us functions on x. However, if I take the elements in there, so, so the expressions I'm writing down here, if f, f, f is homogeneous of degree d there, this is f d of x naught x1 up to xn, and then divided out by x naught to the power of d. Right? So, um, so this k homogeneous of x does not give us does not, as it stands, give us functions on x. However, if I allow a little denominator here, if I say, well, I'm going to only take the points where x0 is not 0, so then I give you permission to divide by x0, 
the x naught, I'm only looking at the places where x naught is not equal to zero, then I can just take every, all the homogeneous polynomials in this ring, which is, uh, you know, the whole ring consists of sums of homogeneous polynomials, with a, with a homogeneous polynomial of degree d, given that x naught is not zero, and just divide it by x naught to the d, I get something which on the one hand is an element of the, uh, an element of the function field of x, so, so this, it's okay. I'm, uh, yes, okay, 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 this is, this is, I, I'm, the thing I'm describing is k of x naught, k affine of x naught. <coughs> so I'm taking homogeneous forms, I'm taking homogeneous forms on x of degree d, and then I'm doing this obvious construction. So on the one hand, I'm taking the homogeneous form dividing by x naught to the d. On the other hand, I can think of this as just being the same polynomial evaluated on one and then the, these sets of points in the, the affine piece. Right? <coughs> and so, uh, so how, to pr how to prove the lemma? Well, I've told you that what the affine space is. If I take frac of this, Right. Then I get this is the set of f over g. This is a set. This is uh, um, you know f of d, and the equivalence relation is also the same. So uh, you know there's just a little uh, a little thing you have to check here. So in other words, this new field of fractions here. Well, it doesn't actually tell us very much that we didn't already know. Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't stated the lemma yet. Right. The, the the lemma the lemma I want is that uh, yeah I'm sorry uh, let, let me let me trying to go too fast uh, I have uh, k of x which is the set of so the way I described it it's the set of g h over g d over h d Right, a homogeneous, homogeneous of the same degree. And on the other hand, I have k of x naught, which is uh, k, af uh, uh, k of the affine variety x naught. So this one is the field of fractions of uh, k of x naught. Um, let me. Okay, so given the given the x, I can I can think of the x as a projective variety and make its rational function fields like this, or I can take just the open set where I, one of the x naughts not zero. Then I've got this affine coordinate ring. This is a sensible thing that I talked about uh, in the last, uh, you know, in lectures about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. So this is a sensible object, and now we're taking its f the field of fractions of this affine coordinate ring, right? And the, the lemma, the lemma, the statement of the lemma is that these two guys are equal, k of x equals k of x naught, right? And so the uh, the idea of the proof is the thing I was talking about here, namely I take I take an element g d over h d, and I can think of this as being g d divided by x naught to the power of d divided by f d divided by x naught to the d. Right, these are just, uh, so the, the thing I'm writing down here is uh, an identity, uh, obvious identity, right? But on the other hand, this one here, I can think of as being g d evaluated at 1 and then x i over x naught. And I can think of this as being now a function in k of k affine of x naught.
in a, a given space. So remember when, I, when we did the affine case, we had affine varieties, and then we talked about affine varieties up to isomorphism. So for that, we needed... So, uh, so re regular functions... Regular functions... And morphisms uh, on X projective will be defined in terms of K of X, right, of the function field K of X. So, so you know, let, let, I want to make the I want to emphasise that this is quite different from what we did in the affine case. In the affine case, we talked about polynomial functions and we talked about polynomial maps between varieties, and then we had, uh, you know, an isomorphism is a uh, <coughs> is a is a, a polynomial map with a polynomial map inverse, and that's directly coming out of the affine coordinate ring, right? Here, we can't do that, because the, the, the homogeneous coordinate ring is just the wrong expression for doing that. It takes, account, it takes too much account of uh, you know, the way that projective space is defined. So here, uh, I'm, uh, uh, so we do this sidestep. Right? We can't do regular functions directly, so we do instead do rational functions. And then we use rational functions, uh, so uh, I'll be talking next time about defining morphisms. I'm not doing that now immediately. Uh, but they will be defined in terms of uh, function fields and notion of, uh, notion of regularity. Right? <coughs> So, uh, so, you know, this is the, the point I'm making is that this is really quite different from the, the affine case. So the uh, K homogeneous of X. So this is, r r remind you, this is K of X naught. This is the projective space. Homogeneous forms on the projective space divided out by this ideal. So this is the homogeneous coordinate ring. So this takes account, this is really, uh, is really uh, a construction involving, involving C of X. Right, so this is directly the homogeneous, the affine coordinate ring on this affine cone. Right, and in order to, to do anything with it, for X itself, we have to do this rational function trick and then you know, we have to go a round, round, roundabout route. It's not, not a direct route. Right? So, so in, uh, for the rest of today's lecture, I want to talk about a different idea, which really does, which, which is really uh, uses this homogeneous coordinate ring to get something really useful and good uh, out, uh, out of it. So I want to talk about... Uh, so this is next time. And now I want, I want to talk about uh, uh, um, application of K homogeneous of X. And so, uh, you know, we've got this nice algebraic tool We've got this, uh, you know, algebraic device, and so I want to use it, you know, where the algebra is good. Let's use it for for what it's good at. Uh, and uh, what I what I want to talk about is the, uh, the these three notions: Hilbert uh, function, Hilbert polynomial, and Hilbert series. Right, and uh, so what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I I'll do this is easy algebra, 
and it has useful applications to understanding understanding um, dimension degree of, uh, and uh, other invariants so uh, also intersection numbers uh, etc so I'm not so I'm not I'm not listing everything that you can do using this notion. I'm just saying that the, I'm just trying to say this is a useful application. So, in other words, instead of uh, complaining that this guy is no no good at anything, instead instead of complaining this is useless and I have to do this complicated uh, function field business, I'm going to take this say this well. So th so what is this? It's a graded ring. It's uh, you know, related to X, but also to the embedding of X in projective space, and I'm going to use him for what he's good at. So what he's good at is he's a finitely generated graded ring. So, um, you know, the, the good news, this is the uh, k-homogeneous of X is uh, finitely generated. L let, me, let me spell it out the first time. Finitely generated. Uh, a graded K algebra. So, in fact, uh, you know, there's something a little bit more than this. All the generators in degree one. And also, you know, integral domain and so on. Uh, so, uh, I'm not an integral domain. So, uh, and so, you know, the, the, if we do, if, we, if, you know, if you're systematic and you're, if you're going to do algebra, if you're going to use algebra, you might as well use it, uh, uh, try to use it well. So, I, so at the moment I've got uh, K, so let me write A now for K of X not up to XN. So this is, uh, you know, one single ring that has lots of lots of, st of stuff in it. So let me let, let me just start by. So this is a graded ring. So let me start by doing something not in very not in very great generality. So let's take a graded ring and uh, 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 what do I want to say? It's a graded ring by A is direct sum A N. So let, let me say A D, D greater than or equal to zero. A D is homogeneous polynomials. So I take homogeneous polynomials of degree D <coughs> in given variables X naught up to Xn. And something you notice about this which is immediately useful is that there are finitely many of these and we can count them. Right? So this guy here is a finite dimensional vector space. And uh, does anybody know its dimension? What, so, you know, if you have to calculate it for yourself. So d equals zero. Polynomials of degree zero, how many are there? Right. So the thing I'm writing down here is a, is a basis. So degree equals 1. I've got x naught up to xn. And there are, there are n plus 1 of them. 
So here is one of them. D equals 2. So I'm getting all the, all the x, i, x, j. Now these are, these are quadratic, uh, all the quadratic forms, but x, i, x, j is symmetric in i and j. So I have, uh, you know, I, I've drawn this many times already. <coughs> x squared, x, y, y squared, x, z, y, z, z squared. So if, uh, if here n is 2 and I'm getting 6, does anybody know the number I should write here? What's this number? So, so you know this x i squared for i equals zero up to n plus n, and x i x j for you know i less i zero equals zero less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n. I've got n n plus one of the first, and how many of these? and choose two. What am I getting here? Sorry, this is n plus one, choose two. <laughs> Yes. What am I getting here? So, look, we're getting n plus 2 choose 2. Yeah? So, you know, try it when n is equal to 2. When n is equal to 2, this is 2 plus 2, 4 choose 2, which is 4 times 3 over 2, which is 6, and that's the number there. Yeah? So, uh, you know, d equals 3... Well, uh, you know, it gets a bit more complicated, but you can, you can figure it out if you need, need to. This is x i, x j, x, x k, again, with symmetric in these uh, three. And the number you'll get if you calculate it is n plus 3 choose 3. Right? So these, these numbers are called binomial coefficients. Yes? So, you know, you learn them uh, probably... Uh, you know, if you're final year undergraduate or first year graduate students, you might actually be t teaching this to first year students. Right, so, uh, I mean, this is a very, very useful calculation. I mean, I already used this calculation here, 6, or, you know, the one with x cubed, x squared y and so on, the one that gives 10 there. I used it already used many, many times in these lectures. Okay, so uh, what do I want to say? So, uh, if I do, this is uh, homogeneous forms. On Pn, of degree D, the number of them is equal to n plus d choose d, which is also n plus d choose 2, n plus d choose n. So this is an example of a Hilbert function. Actually, it's a it's a sort of uh, pretty pretty. It's the best, the nicest example. So I want to give example of Hilbert series. Right. So Hilbert series is I have this. Um, so let me let me say what the Hilbert function is. So namely, the Hilbert function P D 
is the dimension over the field K of my, uh, at the moment, what have I got? Of A, D. Right, so Hilbert series is, so, you know, this happens in lots of different areas of mathematics, but it, it's a kind of, think of these as some, some kind of combinatorial number. Right? These, are, this, this, these, are, these numbers are some kind of combinatorial numbers, so, you know, permutations and combinations. Uh, so, uh, you know, what, uh, there's a trick I can do here, which is I've got these numbers, these are integral functions, and I can make these into a power series. I can make these into a formal power series. So, let me write down sum PD T to the power of D. And let, let me call this P of A. So for P, I don't know, P A of T. Right? So, so what is this? This is, um, it's a, a formal power series. It's, a genera it's called a generating function. It contains the same information as the function, as the Hilbert function, namely uh, D maps to PD equals dimension A in degree D. Okay, so what's it good for? So the, the, uh, the, the, point, the point about this, the point about this is that it's, um, it has more structure by, ma by making it, by make, taking not, not just the individual terms, the in, the, n not just terms, the individual terms for different D, but by putting them all together in this power series, I get something which has more structure. And uh, what's going to happen is that, uh, in fact, uh, this is a rational function. It's a, a, a very simple rational function of t. So I'm, I, I'll tell you the answer immediately, but I want to keep you, uh, I want to try to keep some interest, so I won't... Uh, so some of you will have seen this already, of course. But uh, so at the moment I'm doing this exercise. This is just an example of trying to understand the numbers, the combinatorial numbers involved in this uh, in this ring. Later on, I'll be doing it for these uh, these rings or modules over these rings more generally. Yes. So look, I give you, I, I'm going to write down some numbers on the board, and you, t and you have to tell me the next number in the series, right? So suppose I do uh, 1, uh, I make it too easy, 1, 3, 6, 10. What's the, number, what's the next number in the series? Did somebody tell me? 15? These are called triangular numbers, 21. 28. <coughs> right, so there's a way of understanding these numbers, which is to take successive differences. So this is sometimes called uh, uh, l l interpolation. So interpolation. Right, I could do uh, the difference here is... 1, and then the difference here is 2, then the difference here is 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And what do you notice? You notice that the second line is simpler. This is simpler. Right? And, well, you know, if a trick, say, if it was a good trick once, let's do it again. And so, uh, you know, I'm going to put zero. I'm not going to explain how the induction starts, but uh, I can do, uh, I can do, what's the difference here? It's one. What's the difference there? It's one again. What's the difference there? One, one, one. 
if I do it, if I do the differencing again, then I'm actually going to get one zero 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 zero. No, so I'm sorry. I should have put one. I should have put one there. I'm going to get one zero. So if I take this series of numbers P D, and then I define P primed to be P D minus P D minus one. Right? So that's that's exactly the procedure I applied to go from here to here, or from here to here, or from here to here. Yes? So as far as this sum of P D t to the d is concerned, but what, is, what is p primed of d? How do I get, how do I get a, a function which is p d minus p d minus 1? Right. So we you know I can think of suppose I, I want to think of this as zero plus t plus three t squared plus six t cubed plus uh, ten t to the fourth plus etc. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I want to think of this as being. Uh, T, uh, sorry, uh, 1 plus 2t squared plus 3t cubed plus 6t to the fourth plus 10t to the fifth plus etc. Infinite series. So, you know, you know this. You've seen this many times before. This is a, a simple rational function. This thing here is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus t all cubed. Yes, and so uh, and so, this function here, this you know, differenced function, is this one times one minus t. Right? Because if you think of the term in degree d of this of this product here, it's p d arising from the one, and then I'm going to multiply by this minus t here. And so then I'm going to get p d minus 1 times, the t, times t to the power of the same d. Right? So uh, anyway, let me, uh, let, me, let, let, me, let me say what this, let me say, finally say what the result is. So this is, uh, you know, a theorem, a very trivial theorem, but it's a theorem. But uh, if I do the Hilbert series, a of t, so for a equals polynomial ring, x naught up to xn, this p of t is 1 over 1 minus t to the n plus 1. Right? And so, uh, you, know, this, uh, uh, you know, these numbers, of course, are very simple, and you've seen them many times before. Right? You, if I ask you to calculate a binomial coefficient, you can do it straight away. Right? But nevertheless, there's, an, there's a, an infinite amount of information contained in these numbers. And this series here contains it all directly. Right? So uh, the coefficients the coefficients are um, n plus d choose D. Okay, so let's prove this from first principles. So proof, uh, you know, from nothing
Right, so I'm not assuming anything about combinatorics. I'm not assuming that you know what these coefficients are. Right? Let's take. Let's let's let 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 me consider one. Let's consider one of one minus x to start with. Right. So there's a famous power series for this, which is one plus x plus x squared plus x to the n plus and so on. Right. And what is this? I say that this is the polynomial ring k of x. Right? Namely, uh, the polynomial ring k of x. The thing that's written here is 1 x x squared, x cubed, and so on, x to the n. I'm writing out a basis of this vector, of this as a k vector space. So this is a basis of the k vector space. And then I'm taking a formal sum. Right? And so this expression here, 1 of 1 minus x, is just, you know, this ring written out as a series. So, you know, I've chosen a basis element. I've chosen a basis element in degree 1. And then in every other degree, I'm just getting the products of that. Right? Now let me put uh, xi there. Right? Now, now what happens if I've got more than one of them? So let's do 1 over 1 minus x1 times 1 over 1 minus x2. Right? Then what I've got is uh, this sum of x to all, all the x1 to all the possible <coughs> all the possible powers, a, times sum of x2 to all the powers b. Right? And you know, obviously the powers here are running from zero to infinity. Right? And so what's this? So this is just the sum of all x1 to the a, x2 to the b. And for all a, b, positive. Yeah? And so it's just the same thing. This is... This thing here is k x1, x2, choose a basis, <coughs> and take, take a formal sum. Right? So I've just done exactly the same thing as here. So, you know, uh, if I had to write it out in longhand, it's 1 plus x1 plus x1 squared plus and so on x2 plus x1, x2 plus and so on, plus x2 squared, right? So I'm just filling the whole blackboard here in the two, di two directions with all the powers of x, all the powers of y, right? And so finally I can uh, get to the thing I wanted, 1 minus xi product i equals 1, uh, i equals 0 to n. Okay, so this is just the polynomial ring. K of this is just the polynomial ring A. <coughs> right, so this is a sum. This is a sum. That when, when I take this product, that's just the same thing as the sum over all x to the m, all, all monomials. in x1, x0 up to xn. So now let's, let's calculate how many there are in a given degree. How many are there in degree d? So what do I have to do? So I look at a table like this, and then I take all the elements in degree d. Uh, you know, each of them, each of these different monomials is appearing here in, in this table exactly once. So I say, if I substitute 
xi equals t. I'm going, to take, I'm going to take this expression here, which is just the sum of all monomials, and then I'm just going to substitute xi equals t. So substitute all xi So substitute all xi to t. Right, then on the one hand, I'm getting product 1 over 1 minus t to the n plus 1. Right, each of these, it, uh, so this is, I'm sorry, product of n plus 1 terms, this. And so this is equal to 1 over 1 minus t to the n plus 1. On the other hand, I'm getting a sum over all monomials x to the m of t to the sum m. Right? So if I take a monomial like this x1, x2, I substitute t for x and t for, x, t for x1 and t for x2. The only thing that remains is t to the composite degree, to the total degree of this term. Right? So uh, here I have lots and lots of monomials, each monomial appearing exactly once. And when I do this, I'm just getting sum of all monomials here to the power, the total power. So this is, uh, in other words, x1, uh, x0, to the m naught, x naught, x1 to the m1, and so on, xn to the mn, just maps to t to the power of sum of the mi. Right? And so that proves my result. If I want to know how many monomials there are in degree n, it's exactly the same as the coefficient of this uh, power series in degree n. And then finally, uh, how do we uh, how do we see that that's uh, so y uh, y n plus d choose d so why is this equal to one uh, n plus d choose d? Uh, there ought to be a very simple argument for this. Uh, uh, okay, I give up. Uh, let's think about it. So you know, there's a very simple combinatorial reason why we get this. So you know, the thing, the thing I, I hope I've. Uh, I've introduced you to the idea of, uh, you know, I, I hope I've taught you, uh, is that, uh, you know, this is the correct these binomial coefficients, right? This binomial coefficient is the number of monomials here. So it's the, it's the number of monomials here of given degree, of given total degree, right? On the other hand, it's a, a coefficient in this power series. So, uh, you know, why do you get n plus d choose d? Well, you know, you can recover it by doing this thing here, which is, uh, you know, basically Pascal's triangle. Okay, anyway, that's a little uh, aside. So, I want to state, I want to state and prove a result. Uh, uh, Okay, okay. Let, 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 let me state and prove a result and then apologize for it afterwards. So uh, uh, A is the uh, polynomial ring uh, in n plus 1 variables. K, it's not up to X. So let, let me take M to be finitely generated module over A. Okay, and the thing I have to apologize is that I've been warned that some of you, that, that many of you will not have seen the definition of module. 
But let's not worry about it just for the moment. Let me, uh, let, let, let me proceed and we'll see how far we get. Right? And so this means that, uh, that let's say generators, uh, generators, um, I need some letters. Let, let me say, <coughs> let me say U, U1 up to UK and degree of the, uh, I'm sorry, fin finitely, oh, okay. So uh, I want a def definition graded module. So M is a graded module over A. It means that M is uh, <coughs> uh, M is uh, uh, an additive group. And there's a multiplicative multiplication of by A, A cross M, that's to M, right? Uh, making M into a module right. So, uh, so, so in other words, this multiplication map has the property that uh, A plus B times M is uh, A M plus B M and uh, A times M1 plus M2 is uh, AM1 plus AM2, right? And so, you know, the, if K is a field, this is just the definition of a vector space, right? More generally, there's, it, there's a, a notion of a module here. And, I, you know, let, let me, I don't, need, I don't need this in full gen generality, so just, uh, if you don't know what a module is, then uh, don't worry about it too much. Also, I want it graded. I want it graded, and that means that M is the sum of M D. And now I'm going to take D in Z and uh, multiplication A cross M into M takes A, uh, you know, um, uh, some letter here, N, uh, A some letter E times M. Let, let's say uh, AD times ME maps to, uh, goes to uh, MD plus E. So the main, thing, uh, the main thing I need actually is when A is a ring itself, when A is, uh, for example, a quotient ring. So example, uh, let me so example uh, K homogeneous of X is A divided by I X is a A module is a graded A module <coughs> okay, so uh, so definition uh, M is finitely generated. as a module, as an A module. If uh, you know a times m1 plus a times m2 plus a times m uh, some uh, some number here k maps to m is surjective with m1 up to m k finite set. Right, so this is like saying uh, a, 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 a vector space is finitely is generated by finitely many elements. Okay, I'm sorry, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of forgotten that I need this definition. Uh, if you if you haven't seen if you haven't if you're worried about modules, then uh, you know this is going to appear in this proof and nowhere else. So 
basically. I'm talking, I'm talking about very elementary mathematics. So definition, Hilbert series of M is uh, some P D of M, T to the D. So this is, um, so call this PM of T, right, where, where uh, so, so, so let's be careful about this. This D is in Z, D includes negative numbers, because I, I didn't tell you, I told you this, so this, this module can have a few, neg a, a, a finitely many negative terms if it wants. Okay, so uh, where P D of M is the dimension over K of uh, M in, in degree D, right? So uh, if, uh, if M is finitely generated, then this number, this dimension, then this is finite. Okay, and the, uh, the, the theorem, uh, you know, I mean, it's, this is very easy. This is a, a proposition. Let me, uh, proposition, um, PM of T is a numerator divided by 1 minus T to the N plus 1, where the numerator is a polynomial, is a, an integral polynomial, an integral, I should say, Laurent polynomial. Okay. So, sorry, I'm, I'm getting to the, to the end of the time and I don't have time to give the proof. But uh, basically, you've seen, you've seen the main idea of the proof. The main idea of the proof is this. Okay, so, so this means it looks like something like this. T to the power of uh, k, uh, a, a, a k t to the k plus a k plus 1, t to k plus 1 plus, uh, you know, a l t to the l. So this is a finite number of terms. Right. And uh, divided by 1 minus t to the n plus 1. Uh, and these, uh, these, th th nobody said that these have to be positive or anything. The, uh, the, uh, the ak's are just some integers. The ak are in z. And, and it can happen that, it can happen, so k is also in z, right? So I might have, for example, t to the minus 3 plus t to the 7th <coughs> divided by 1 minus t to the 5th or something like that. Okay, so, uh, uh, so, so, so I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I sort of rushed this last thing. I, I, I'd forgotten that I had to give this definition. Uh, the thing I'm talking about is really very, is, is really, very elementary and gives very strong results very quickly. So uh, if you haven't, if you're worried about what modules are, then uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much. It's, uh, it's not uh, nothing hard going on here. Okay. Uh, so uh, you know this, this, uh, these Hilbert series give you. Lots and lots of these little combinatorial games, and uh, you know the, the all the, the terms appearing in Riemann Rock, for example, are just come up, going to come out in uh, in a very easy way from this kind of analysis, from this kind of you know combinatorial messing around. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry I slightly rushed that last section.